1970s Lincoln scents come in two varieties, small date and large date. Both are popular among collectors, who often seek to have one of each in their collection. Identifying a 1970s small date Lincoln scent from a 1970s large date involves examining both the date and the inscription liberty on the obverse. Here's how you can tell them apart. The 1970s small date, also known as the high 7 variety, features the top of the digit 7 in the date perfectly aligned with the tops of the other three numerals. Imagine a straight line across the tops of the digits, if they all line up, you have a small date. On the other hand, the 1970s large date, or low 7 variety, shows the top of the 7 sitting lower than the tops of the other digits. This variety is scarcer and more desirable, especially in higher mint state grades, MS65 and above. An exceptional example of the 1970s large date in MS67 red, a superb gem with sharply struck and flawless surfaces, sold for an impressive $2,310 at legend rare coin auctions. Collectors are willing to pay a premium for such high-quality specimens, making this variety particularly valuable in top condition. It may sound unbelievable, but it's true. A seemingly ordinary 2001 Lincoln cent, found in pocket change, recently fetched an impressive $430 at the David Lawrence coin auction. What makes this coin so valuable isn't its date of issue, but rather its exceptional condition. Graded as an immaculate MS69, this penny boasts an almost perfect strike and vibrant mint luster. In the world of coin grading, MS69 is just one step below the highest possible grade, MS70. Achieving such a high grade is no small feat and indicates that the coin has virtually no visible imperfections, making it nearly perfect. For modern coins like the 2001 Lincoln Cent, attaining such a high grade is incredibly challenging. Even minor handling during minting or packaging can lead to tiny imperfections that lower the grade. This particular coin's rarity lies not in its age or design, but in its remarkable condition, making it a prized addition to any collector's showcase. The 1963 Lincoln Cent, typical of those from the mid-20th century, is a common coin in circulated condition. Minted in large numbers at the Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco mints, hundreds of millions were produced. In circulated condition, the 1963 Lincoln cent generally holds a value close to face value or slightly more, given its commonality and ease of finding in pocket change or coin rolls. While the 1963 P Lincoln cent is abundant in circulated condition up to MS63 grade, examples grading MS64 and higher typically come from rolls or mint sets. Even in MS65 condition, these coins are readily available without commanding a significant premium, often purchasable raw for under $1. However, as the grade increases, their availability decreases. In MS66 condition, the 1963 Lincoln cent becomes scarce, with probably fewer than 1,500 coins in existence in this grade or higher. Achieving an MS67 grade is even more challenging, with very few examples known to exist. It's likely that no more than a dozen specimens exist in MS67 condition, and there are probably no MS68 or higher grades in existence. A stunning example of this coin, graded as MS67 red and encased in a PCGS slab, recently sold for $425 at the David Lawrence coin auction. This price reflects the rarity and exceptional condition of this particular coin, making it a noteworthy find for collectors. This 1971 Lincoln cent is no ordinary pocket change, it's the highly coveted double die obverse variety, attributed as FS101. The 1971 double die is a scarce variety, with only a few hundred examples known since its discovery. Although it isn't as well known as the 1969S double die or the 1972 double die, it remains a significant find for collectors of Lincoln cents. Unlike some of the more dramatic double dies in the series, the doubling on the 1971 FS101 is subtler, often requiring magnification to spot. The doubling is most noticeable on the word liberty and the phrase in God we trust. Despite its subtlety, any uncirculated example is considered scarce, with possibly no more than 100 examples known in mint state condition. In MS65 and higher, this variety is very scarce, with fewer than 50 examples known. MS66 specimens are particularly rare. A remarkable MS66 example of this 1971 double die Lincoln cent recently sold for $2,055 at David Lawrence coin auction. This price underscores the rarity and desirability of this coin in such a high grade, making it a prized addition for any serious collector. The full mint luster of this practically perfect 1947's Jefferson nickel truly stands out, especially in its remarkable MS67 condition with full steps. While many of these coins were hoarded by the roll, making mint state pieces relatively common. Finding one with both superior luster and a sharp strike is a rarity. 
Collectors often encounter examples that exhibit either one quality or the other, but seldom both. The coin illustrated here is exceptional, showcasing both attributes. It is predominantly white with subtle whispers of iridescent toning, adding to its visual appeal. A couple of minor marks are present, originating from the unstruck areas of the planchet rather than from bag marks, further highlighting its pristine condition. This outstanding specimen recently sold for $1,755, underscoring its scarcity and desirability among collectors seeking top quality examples of this issue. Check out this stunning 1957 D. Roosevelt dime, which recently fetched an impressive $7,853.62 at a great collections auction. This 10-cent piece is an uncirculated superb gem, graded as MS-68 with the coveted full bands designation. Despite a high mintage and the widespread saving of BU rolls making this issue quite common in mint state through MS-67, the 1957 D stands out for its exceptional quality. Better quality control at the Denver Mint, compared to Philadelphia, has resulted in a fair number of specimens with full torch details. However, Finding one in such pristine condition as this MS-68 with full bands is a true rarity. The superb luster, sharp strike, and exquisite toning make this coin a prized possession for any serious collector. Its remarkable condition and eye appeal undoubtedly contributed to its staggering auction price, highlighting the ongoing demand for top-quality Roosevelt dimes. An extraordinary find, a 1920 Buffalo nickel struck on a scent planchet, graded AU55 by PCGS. This rare error coin weighs 3.13 grams and is a remarkable piece of numismatic history. Over the years, Heritage Auctions has handled around two dozen 1920 buffalo nickels struck on scent planchets. It appears that a bin of scent planchets was inadvertently fed into a press striking nickels that year, resulting in a number of these errors before the mistake was recognized by the mint staff. This particular error coin made its way into circulation but displays only minimal wear. The strike is soft on the bison's hair yet the devices remain fairly sharp overall. Due to the smaller flan, the date in United States of America are only partially visible, and liberty is distorted from the collar unrestrained expansion during the strike. This fascinating wrong planchet error showcases the intriguing possibilities of minting mistakes and adds significant value and interest to any collection. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed learning about these rare and valuable US coins, don't forget to hit that like button. Your support really helps the channel grow and reach more coin enthusiasts like you. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so you never miss an update. I regularly upload videos about rare coins, coin errors, and valuable finds that you might just have in your pocket change or coin collection. By subscribing, you'll stay informed about the latest trends and discoveries in the numismatic world. I also love hearing from you. Drop a comment below to let me know your thoughts on these rare coins. Do you have any of these in your collection? Have you ever come across a valuable coin in your change? Share your stories and any tips you might have for fellow collectors. Your insights and experiences make our community even richer. Additionally, if there's a specific topic or coin you'd like me to cover in future videos, feel free to mention it in the comments. I'm always looking for new ideas and would love to tailor content to what you're most interested in.